Hi everyone, I thought I would put a couple videos together for a couple ideas for beading on the moccasin vamps if you'd like to do some prior to the moccasin pro d workshop you can pick up the supplies from me um, this video right now will be demonstrating how to make circles so that you could maybe just do something simple like berries and in my opinion this is the quicker way of beading this one here is the next one that I would recommend and I have a separate video posted on how to do the diamond so you can watch that one if you'd like to do this style watch this one if you'd like to do this one at the very end of this I'm just going to quickly briefly go over the fact that you could do a full flower I have not finished because this is quite time consuming so let's get started so basically this will be our vamp here that we will be beading on prior to the workshop and then during the workshop we will be uh, working on making an actual pair of moccasins from scratch so you should have picked up some melton fabric from me which will be created into your vamp here and you will also should have picked up some interfacing which we will use to stabilize the back of this it'll just make it more stiff so your beads won't flop around as much and for the purpose of this video I have just used this book that has some templates in it I'm using a size 8 and I cut myself out uh, the pattern so that I could create approximate size of what my vamp would be um, we will be in the workshop we will actually be tracing our foot and doing a whole uh, measurement from scratch so that you can get a measurement of your foot to the exact size and this shape will actually be catered more you'll have kind of a right toe and a left toe this is just a gen generically straight one for this I would recommend watching the video on how to measure your foot and then you can possibly make your little template in advance so then you'll know exactly what your size is and you'll bead in the, the spot that you want so this is roughly a woman's size 8 and I will be also making the proper template later but for now I want to show you that you'll take your piece and you have to consider that if this is going to be your vamp that which is this section right here where if you can see this on this picture where this uh, this is where the beadwork is we will be putting fur on like this so your fur is going to cover over a portion of this top section here so that's why I drew, drew these little lines also you will be sewing about a quarter of an inch of this away so that's only going to leave you with this little section here to bead on so in the end if you fold this leave this um, you probably will only end up with about a two two inches by two inch little section that you can bead on um, on some of my previous ones that I have done I did a whole bunch of bead work and a lot of it ended up being covered up with the fur so you just try not to waste your time doing that and just remember that you should bead more down in this section so that's why I made this template for myself so I can have a better idea and what I decided to do was cut my interfacing down into this shape and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off this top section where I think the fur is going to overlap so I'm going to make it you know maybe about that big now when I put this on the back 
I will know that I'm only going to be beading right here and I'm going to make sure I don't bead along these little edges here. So I'm going to pin this now down to the back. If you want to, you can, as I said, go watch uh, Ms. Chambers video who's going to be our, our instructor. She has a video on how to measure this and then if you want to you could cut this out according to her instructions okay you could cut this out and then you'll know exactly where you're beading but right now I can see that my section is going to be right approximately here also please go to the end of the video for just a few tips on cutting out this pattern how we do it is you will start you know take a guess of where you might do a few circles so uh, actually I think I'll just do one directly in the center right now and go from there so tie yourself you know make make this knot secure on the bottom tie it off a few times Okay, I've tied this off about three times already. Okay, and then you're going to bring your needle up to wherever you want to start. These are going to be the same size beads that you guys will be taking. So your center will be starting with just one bead. So you just take one bead and you're going to basically tack this bead down. Okay, and you should secure it a couple times because you don't want it to come undone or get loose. So I'm going to go through there and go down again. Okay, there's my center bead. Now here's the fun part. This is what I like about this. So you're going to start beside the bead and you're going to load up however many you think is going to make a circle. And I haven't done this size recently so I'm not sure but let's start with about seven, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then what you're going to do is make yourself a little circle around the center bead. You're going to see if that's enough. Um, I think I'm going to get one more. I'm going to make it eight. It might be different for you because the beads are all slightly different size. Now this is the fun part. What I like about this is all you do is you go back in through that very first bead like that. Can you see that? You go in through there and then you're just going to sort of hold this down while you pull your string through and it's going to make you a circle, okay, around that center bead. Can you see that? Now, of course, it's just all floppy right now, right? It's just sitting there. So what I need to do now is bring my needle down to the bottom. Okay. And it's still going to be floppy. So now I just go around the circle and tack down um, some of the beads. You can do every one if you want or every second one. It just depends on how secure you want your beads to be. Okay, so there I've, I think I, I pretty much went to every second one. And basically, you know, you come up on one side, right? I'm, I'll do one more. You come up on one side, then you go down on the other side of the bead and you kind of put your needle on an angle like that. You pull through and then the string will go through two of the beads 
and you pull it tight and that's how you tack down and we've done that in several of my videos already so I'm sorry if I bypass that a little bit too fast okay so now if you wanted to you could actually just make this into a little flower instead you could do a bunch of these I just do a bunch of little flowers but if you want to make it more into a bigger round shape, maybe make it into a berry. Now that you've done your first round section, you can just come up beside. And now you will do the same thing and put on as many beads that will go around in this circle. Oh, I'm going to try. Let's just go for 13 right now and see what happens. Okay, so then you just will try to make a chain. So see, you're going to need another maybe four, 13, 14, 15, 16. Let's do 17 and take a look. Yeah, 17 will work, I think. Let's see, let me try to make it a little tighter and check. And if you put too many on, I think that should work. If you put too many on, you can easily just pull one off or, you know, without even um, taking your thread off because you can just pull it all the way down to here and then you pull your, the bead right off the end. Okay, so now you're just gonna do the same thing. This is the part that I think is fun. You go, you've made your circle, you go back in through the very first one like that okay and you're going to pull this just keep pulling it until it forms a circle again but you also want that circle to go over top of the other circle that's there okay there you go so now you get, we're going to do the same thing you pull it tighter Once you've got it around there, you hold it with your thumb, okay? And then you're gonna go down underneath so that it holds it in place. And then you're gonna go around the circle again to tack down several of the beads. And that is all there will be to doing that. But this one I think will be the easiest for you to do that won't take too much time. Okay, I'm going to finish tacking this down and then maybe I'll make a couple other berries and I will be back on. And you can be creative with this and if you want you could do your outer ring uh, a different color. You could do the center bead a different color from the rest. Okay, so don't forget that you will have to do this again on a second vamp because you will be making two moccasin shoes. Just keep it simple if that's what you want to do. But, you know, I can add a little bit of a green stem here for this one. And it will be done the same way of all the other beading tutorials. Usually I only tack four on at once. I mean, I usually only load four on at once and tack them down, but I'm just trying to speed this up. Um, so I'm going to tack down this row here and then I will probably add another stem joining to this one and then maybe another stem joining up to this one and I also forgot to mention that if you have trouble with your thread tangling then you could put some wax on it I did order some beeswax but I don't know if it'll be here in time so what I did is I just get found a tea light at at my house I took it out of the little the little silver container and then I just you know go like this and put some wax on my thread and it seems to work so basically now I'm just you know tacking down every one 
And if you need more instruction on how to do that, then you can refer back to any of my other beading videos. So what I'll do now is that I'm at the end is I'm going to go through the beads again to make the double spine that I always talk about. And maybe this will help me straighten these out a little bit. Okay, just bring the thread through all of them, making a double spine, pulling it down through there, and then now I can start here and work on my next row of green. The way this ended up was you had your one center bead, the next row around was between seven and eight beads. And then the next row around that was between 14 and 16, 16 beads, depending on the size. Uh, that'll help you when you're loading your beads on. Once you've done this on both pieces, if you feel like you want to keep going, you can make your berries even bigger and do another row. So you can go from this to this size. And adding an extra ring for me was stringing on another 25 to 26 beads to make the berries bigger. Okay, I've actually cut out the size of my vamp now and I just wanted to show you that this is where my beading ended up. And that if you have the time to cut it out exactly, then you can place your beads exactly where you want. Maybe now that I see that this is here, I could do a branch off here and put another berry up here. So I just want to quickly show you that we will be in the workshop making a pattern like this but I really do recommend you at least watch it once before the workshop and if you want to make your vamp in advance which is what I'm going to do now I recommend it if you're someone like me who needs to pause and rewind things several times in order to get it done so right now I'm going to cut out my, my vamp, which is going to be this one, so that I can cut the exact shape on here and see if I centered everything properly. This is my vamp, and this will be my right toe, this will be my left toe, flipping it over. So if you have time to do this in advance, you can cut it out. You will cut this into your right shoe and then flip it over to do the left shoe. And then you'll know exactly the spacing that you have for beading on. So I can now that I've, most of you will just do it like this and then we'll cut it out during the workshop. But might not have enough room now that I'm looking at this. Because I think I will. So this flower is gonna sit more like right there. Oh yeah, I just have enough room, okay. So I'm going to place the flower probably, I can feel it, it's right under here. And then I'm going to cut out this, because don't forget this top part will probably be covered with a little bit of fur. So I had my design down here. If I cut this out in advance, then I can see exactly where I, where I have for my beading placement. I also just stumbled across something by accident here. I was doing this on an envelope. And now, when I cut it out, I decided to cut out both sides of the envelope because now I can use the back side for the moccasin part. And now I can use this top section to cut out my vamp. Whereas before, I was thinking I was going to have to duplicate this. And now that's going to be an easy way to do it. Now, when you start cutting out this part for the vamp, Remember to add some notches going outwards. So these, this was just for reference when you were drawing it, but you have to actually cut little notches on the outside of the vamp to match where you placed these because these notches are going to match up with the moccasin notches right down there. So now I have my moccasin cut out and the vamp and what I decided to do before I forget 
although it's kind of obvious that this is the right toe. Um, it's not so obvious on this pattern, however. I'm putting an R on this side, and then I will put an L on the back side. That way, when I'm cutting out my materials, I know to flip it when I'm cutting out my left side, because you want to have the reverse when you're cutting. And you just make sure that you cut them one way and then the other. So you have two different moccasins. Okay, that's it for my advice on that. Now, if you'd like to do an, a full flower, it is quite time consuming, but some of you may want to tackle that if you have more time. We have this book in the ARC that you can sign out or maybe make a couple photocopies of the instructions. It has a very, very good guide here on how to do this step by step. It uh, will walk you through. But basically, once you've done, you know, your center circle here, that's like doing this right here. You've got your circle, which I just showed you how to do. Then you're going to load some beads on and start forming your petals. And what's really good is your thumb comes in handy. It's got a perfectly rounded shape for putting around the beads to help you bead these petal shapes. So once you, you know, you get a petal done, then you continue doing petals and then you start filling in the petals. But I will say that I started <laughs> doing petals a couple months ago. Um, and I got this far and then I just haven't had time to continue it because it is very time consuming. So I can quickly show you that I did the center here just like we just did a berry. Okay, and then I've obviously I've done my outside petals already. And so once you start going on to the inside, you just load some beads down. And you can use your thumb here to help you position these. Okay, you will position them where you need to. Then you're going to bring your needle at the very end down, just like we did with when we were doing the stem. Okay, and then you'll come up and you will tack all your beads down. Okay, so once you've tacked backwards, tack the beads down and you're at the bottom again, you'll just go through the row that you just tacked down until you get to the top of the row. Okay, and then all you got to do is just load on more load on more beads and keep going around and you'll just keep doing that until you fill in. And you can tack down every bead or every second bead depending on how your work is looking if it needs the extra support of having everyone tacked down or if it looks like it's sitting quite nicely by tacking every second one if you do your row long then you may have to go back through only a few beads at a time because being that it's curved now it's harder to make that double spine through them all at once when it's curved so it just takes a little bit more time than doing straight beading having to do the curves so yeah you'll just continue adding more beads tacking down bringing the straight string through to the top again so you can add more beads and you just keep doing that 
until you start filling in. And uh, so there's some options for you on ways you can do some beading.